Hi everybody, Zach here, and welcome to the 54th lesson of this RTS tutorial series. In this video, we'll finish setting up our engineer unit, and to anyone working on their game jam project, I hope everything is going well. That said, fire up your editor, and let's get started. Welcome back to the editor, and the first thing we're going to do in today's video is to clean up a slight mistake from ages ago. Now, hopefully, you caught this mistake at the time that I made it. However, I was rushing for the recording and didn't realize I made this mistake. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our player controller, and you're going to go to your remove passenger from selected, which is under your unit control, and at the very end here it says return resources. If you don't have this and you didn't make the mistake, but if you do, delete it because we're not returning resources. We are doing a return node. Go ahead, save, and compile this. Next, what we need to do is we need to open up the blueprints we're going to need for this video. So the first part that we need to take care of in terms of our blueprints is setting up our training post to spawn in our engineer. So go to your buildings, go to your military building, open your training post, and in your spawn new unit, if your enum set up the same way as mine, the engineer is the second one, go here and switch this over to your engineer unit. So it should be unit master, engineer, harvester, unit master. In the next video, we will change this to our support unit, or we'll make our support unit. Compile, save, and let's go ahead and test that out. So hit play. Go to your training post. Create an engineer. Move your engineer into your factory. All right. Oh, oops, sorry. I don't know why the second one was moving there. All right. So we can see it's already healing from 53 to 54. So we know it is spawning an engineer in. That's wonderful. Now, let's take care of repairing vehicles. So to take care of vehicles, what we need to do is we need to open up our units folder. We need to get our engineer unit. We also need to get our ground vehicle unit. Let's take care of our ground vehicle unit first. So, oddly enough, I want you to go to your get passengers function first. And you'll notice we have this add unique and then remove the target vehicle. Go ahead and delete this because we reset this in other places and if we leave this in it's going to cause issues for our engineer. Plug the add unique into our set occupant list. Let's make sure it still works correctly. So we're going to get our vehicle in. We're going to move this unit in there. It could be either unit or just the first one I saw. And we are going to open our vehicle HUD. We're going to unload our passenger and then we're just going to send our passenger towards the other side of the vehicle. So it's in the collision mesh and it hasn't gone into the vehicle. If you didn't notice I accidentally clicked the video that second time the vehicle that second time. So if I open that back up and release the passenger again and I send them this way, they've hit the collision mesh. They've even turned the vehicle, send them back that way, click the vehicle. Sorry, let me send out of the collision mesh. Click the vehicle, they go back in. So that works. The next thing we need to do is we need to go to our event graph and we need to set up a few things. So the first thing we need to set up is a new bool variable and this will be is under repair. Now in an ideal world you would do this as a function. You would set it up as a function but we're going to not do it that way. We're going to do it the quick and easy way. But if you want a little bit of a challenge and you want to make this more object oriented in approach you'd create a function where you can set this variable as needed and you'd call that function in our engineer unit. But as I said, we aren't going to do it that way. I leave it to you as a challenge. We're going to put that in our bool category. We're going to break the uh, execute pin between the receive movement command and move location. We're just going to put a branch in here. We don't want the vehicle, sorry, we don't want the vehicle moving if it's under repair. Now this is going to pose a slight gameplay issue. And that issue might be, let's say you have engineer units under attack and you want to get them out of there quickly. So you send a vehicle to pick them up, you put them in the vehicle, but the vehicle 
got damaged on the way or is damaged as the engineers are moving towards it, they're going to start repairing right away, which means the unit isn't going to move. Um, but we'll take care of that issue down the road. For now, we just want to make sure that it is working. I do not know why I suddenly have two is under repairs. I'm not sure what happened there. So I'm going to delete both of those. And uh, actually, I'm going, to I'm going to create a... Just make sure I didn't have them anywhere. No references, no references. So we're going to delete both. I'm going to create a new one. Is under repair. That will go into our bool category. And I'm just going to plug that into there. So if it is not under repair, it will move the vehicle. If it is under repair, however, it will do nothing. Next thing is we're going to set it up so that it actually starts doing the repair when the unit gets into the vehicle. So what we're going to do down here is just like in our building, we're going to check is the unit that's entered a engineer or not. So do a branch here. And let's get our selected passenger. We're going to duplicate it twice, once here, once here. And the reason why we're doing it once here is we're going to collapse this down to a function. So drag off of here, get class. And we want to know, is this class equal to our engineer unit? So RTS engineer unit, plug that into there. Select these nodes, right click them, collapse to function. This function is check if engineer, make it a pure function. The return value for our output will be is engineer. If this is true, then we want to get from our selected unit our repair damage. And let's plug that into there. Now, something we need to consider is that unlike our buildings, our vehicles have both armor and health. Our buildings just have health. So if one is damaged and not the other, let's say our armor is damaged but not our health, then this is going to return a false if we're targeting a vehicle. So what we want to do is we're going to create a very similar function. We're going to break that for a second. We're going to create a new peer function, and we'll collapse it down from here. So we want target vehicle. And that's the wrong thing, actually. What we want to do is is valid with the question mark. And we're going to check our target vehicle. So get target vehicle. Is it valid? If it is valid, then what we're going to do is we are going to do a check on it to see if the armor is damaged. And that will be, well, since we're just doing it this way, we'll put a reroute here. And it's going to be very similar to what we did for our check health. We are going to see is our armor value, the max armor value, less than what our whole value can be. So we're going to get our current armor. We are going to get our max armor. And we are going to check is our current less than our max. If so, then we want that to come out on the other end. So what we'll do, actually, I lied to you. Control X these. We are going to make a new function first, and we'll do check armor damage. It's a peer function. All right. Plug that into there. And if it is damaged, we're going to create a new local variable and do armor is damaged. Set that there. Also rename this so it is correctly named because it's a local variable. So that should be armor is damaged local. So if the target vehicle is valid and the current armor is less than the max armor, then the armor is damaged. Select your input node, create a new output, and do on our parameter there, armor is damaged. 
plug that into there, and take this value, get armor damage local, plug it into there. So if our armor is damaged, we're going to pass out a true value here. Compile, save, go back to your event graph, grab your check armor damage. So check is armor damaged. If it is, and the vehicle or the vehicle is not at full health, then we want to engage in our repair. So we're going to use an or value here, or an or statement. So if either of these conditions are true, the next step, compile and save along the way, is we're going to create a new timer. So on the target vehicle is valid, we want to do set timer by function name. And it's going to be a looping event. So we'll set it to 0 0.01, just like this one, looping. It will be repair vehicle. I'm going to copy that name. I'm going to create a new function. And then I'm going to go into my repair building. And I'm just going to copy this first chunk here all the way up into the check uh, target health. I'm going to copy it and paste it into here. But before I do anything, I need a couple of steps I need to do first. Um, so the first thing we need to do is we need to set our bool value from our target vehicle for is under repair to true. So let's get our target vehicle. Get target vehicle. We're going to search in our target vehicle is under repair as a getter, sorry, as a setter, not a getter, is under repair, setter, set it to true, so it's now under repair, plug that into there. Now, I'm just going to move this out of the way, we are going to use this, and we're going to use it to save time as well, we're just going to move that down there for a moment. The first thing I want to do is I want to check if it's armor or health, and I like doing the health first, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this bool value there and I'm going to duplicate it over here and I'm going to plug it into there. Now the reason why I'm doing this is if it, armor is just damaged we don't need to check the health every time. We don't need to run through our entire health check and we're just going to go on to the armor because remember it could be either armor or health that's damaged that triggers this event. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy, actually I'm just going to move this all up here and I'm going to plug that into the true. So is the armor, sorry, is the health damaged? Is there damage to the health bar? If yes, then start a repair. We're going to delete our update health, our target building, and this, not that plus node. We're going to leave that plus node in. Sorry about that. Just delete the update, set current, target current, and target building. We are going to get our target vehicle. So I'm just going to come over here and duplicate it with control W. And we're going to do update unit health bar. Plug the execute pins into each other. Put my reroute in. I don't know why it took me so long to get that reroute. And then off of this, I'm going to do set current health. Plug that into there. Plug that into there, and I'm going to move that along just a tiny bit. Give a little bit more room to play with. And I'm going to put another reroute in there so it's a little bit neater. This value still gets plugged into the float on the current health. And then we're going to take our current health as a getter and add it into our repair time maths here. So now we're repairing it. So if the armor is if the health is damaged, we repair the health. Now we need to repair the armor. But first things first, we need to do one check. We need to reset our repair time to zero just to make our life a little bit easier. So I'm going to duplicate that over here. We're going to reset this to zero. We are then going to make sure that our current health hasn't exceeded our max health. So we're going to take our current health, we're going to take the vehicle, uh, target vehicle pin or node, and duplicate them over there with control W. Plug your 
set repair time into your set current health there, and then grab your target vehicle, plug that into there, put a reroute in, get off of the reroute a max health, plug your max health into there, and we're just gonna put another reroute in so it's a little bit prettier when I move this around. That is not pretty. There we go. Put that over there. All right, there we go. Next, what we need to do is we need to check, is our armor damaged? So we're going to put another branch in here. And on this branch, we are, again, checking our damage to our armor. So we can't assume the armor is damaged. But we, need, we just want to check. So branch. We are going to take our check armor damage we're going to plug it into there if the armor is damaged then we want to engage in the repair and what we're going to do is we are going to basically take everything we've done here so we're going to take all of this so the set repair time all the way through the repair time to 0 0.01 we are going to control w duplicate it over here plug the true into the set pin. So if it is damaged, start repair time again. We're going to change that node, the update unit health bar, to our update unit armor bar. Plug the execute pins into the correct spots. We can get rid of the current health there, and that will be our set armor. So set current armor. Plug the set pin into there. Plug that into our repair time. The float goes into the float again. And we can get rid of this current health getter. And we're going to change it to a max, oh sorry, not max health, a current armor getter. So get the current armor. Plug that in there. All right. Now, finally, what we're going to do, well, not finally, what we're going to do is, if this is true, if our current state is our armor is damaged, we just want to move this along a little bit. Actually, sorry, we want to move all of this along a little bit. I'm just going to drag it over here. We're going to put a reroute between our set current health to max health right there. And what we want to do is off this false, if the health is full, then we want to go directly to check our armor. That way we don't loop through repairing the vehicle every time. So we're just going to put a reroute in here. We're going to drag that down there so it's a little bit neater looking. So we don't have a white execute line going through everything. Put another reroute in. We only need two for this, fortunately. If I can drag it, that would be lovely. And we're going to put it there. Now, unfortunately, I didn't get myself enough room to play with. So I'm just going to grab those few pins, move them that way, back a little bit. There we go. So now we're checking, are we at full health? If we are at full health, then this statement is false. We're going to go down here. We are going to check, is our armor damaged? If we are not at full health, then we'll do our repair for our vehicle damage. So just so I know where th this is a straight line, I'm just going to drag these all down to the thick line there. Okay. It's kind of as close as I can get it. And I like how it slopes downwards slightly, but that's because we're going on false pins towards the end. So now we're repairing the armor to the vehicle. Finally, what we want to do is we want to check, is the vehicle now at full armor? So we're going to put a branch in here. And our conditional statement will be the same as before. We're going to check our armor damage. Now, if the armor is not damaged, if this statement is false, now the statement armor is damaged is false, then we want to clear our timer. So let's go back to our event graph. We're going to copy, Control-C, our timer, and paste it in here as a false statement. So we're clearing our timer. We're going to set that to zero. We're going to clear that out as looping. We could use the return values, create timer, and then clear these timers here. Uh, that's another option to do it. 
um, and it might be a little bit more object orientated in design. So if you want to do it that way, test it out, see if it works, and try it. So if we have damage to our armor, we're going to go through the repair process. When we don't have damage, damage sorry, to our armor, then we are going to clear this timer. The next thing we need to do, just like we did with our building, is to remove this unit from the vehicle. And we also need to tell the vehicle, hey, you're no longer under repair, uh, you can move again. So take your target unit, or target vehicle I mean, control W, duplicate it here, and we're going to do remove single passenger. Now before we go any more forward than plugging the execute pins into each other, let's just make sure that this is going to do what we think it's going to do. Let's compile, let's go back to our ground vehicle, actually let's, let's double click this to open it up, and in here we see it clears the target vehicle, so we don't need to worry about clearing the target vehicle. It will also move our unit correctly. So let's just plug a reroute into there, and I'm going to move this, actually move both of these up here, move that out a bit. The unit we want to remove from the vehicle is the unit that this is running in. And that's just a reference to self, just like you did with the building. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to get from our target vehicle is under repair. We want to set it. And we want to set it to false. We're not going to change anything in there. Put a reroute in. Move it this way. Put another lovely reroute in. And drag that up there. Again, if you use the function approach, which is more object oriented, you know, you'd run that function here and at the start over here. Okay, so now that's all set up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna test this, make sure it works. So we've already tested spawning in our unit, now we need a test, and we've also tested that we can get units in and out of the vehicle without any problems, now we need to test the repair. So we're gonna hit play and test it out. Okay, here we are in our map. There's our engineer. Spawn a vehicle in. You might have noticed earlier the health bar was at 100%. That was because I was testing something out. I reset it during the recording uh, process back to the 25% or 25. It makes it percent when we do the division for max health. Send our unit in there. And let's just zoom in, speed up the time a bit, and put our mouse right over there. And you can see that the health bar is slowly progressing. And there we go, we go past the mouse a little bit. So at this point, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to resume once the health bar is nearly completed. All right, so the health bar is nearly completed. What do you mean to suck the unit? Ah, sorry about that. All right, health bar is completed. You saw the armor bar hopefully move. So the armor bar is progressing. All right, again, I'm going to pause the video and resume when it's nearly done. All right, so it's nearly done. Let's make sure it releases our unit. There we go. It's released our unit. Let's make sure the vehicle still moves. Oops, sorry, I didn't select the vehicle. All right, so the vehicle isn't moving, and I have a good idea where the issue is. Let's put the unit here. So if we close this out, I bet we're going to get a read none error. And in fact, I did get a read none error. So the reason we're getting this error is we've put our nodes in the wrong order. So remember, this remove single passenger clears our target vehicle out. We have no target vehicle at this step. So what we need to do is just reorganize these pins. I'm going to take both of these, actually. And I'm going to, you know what we're going to do? We're just going to control X list. Paste it over there, break that, move this here, plug that into there, plug that into there. And, oh, there's no neat way to do that, unfortunately. Plug that into there. So one more test, make sure it works. I'm going to just load the game up put the vehicle in, move the unit into it, and once the unit has finished the repairs, I will resume recording. So I'll see you in just a moment. Okay, so the unit has finished the repair, 
It's left the vehicle. Let's see if the vehicle moves. And the vehicle is now moving. Let's send the unit in. Actually, what we want to do is we want to send it into the collision box. All right, so we ran into an issue. It didn't clear the unit. Let's also make sure that it can still move. Yep, it hasn't accidentally started trying to repair it again. So I just want to make sure that I did this correctly. So what I'm going to do, because it's already been repaired, I want to make sure that it is happening if the unit is damaged and when the unit's fully repaired. So again, I'm going to just pause the video and I'm going to wait until the vehicle is repaired. Once the unit is ejected, I'm going to send it past and make sure I can see the uh, target mark. So we're back. Our unit has left the vehicle. I'm just going to move the vehicle up here, make sure it can still move. Actually, technically, what we can do is we can move the vehicle here and then move it back this way. If the unit, when it hits the vehicle, or when the vehicle hits the unit, oh, it moved around the unit. That didn't really work on my test. Let's say if the vehicle can hit the unit and the unit doesn't uh, go into the vehicle, then it is properly set up. All right, so we're definitely in that collision box and we're not having any issues. Let's just test it the other way around just to make sure and send our unit that way. And nope, it has cleared our unit. I just accidentally hit the vehicle uh, earlier in my test. All right, that said, that takes us through setting up our vehicle repair and our engineer unit. We can now spawn it in. It can now repair buildings and it can repair vehicles and their armor. In the next video, what we will do is we will set up our lovely support unit which will repair the armor and health of nearby units. And we might even give it another feature when we create our infantry unit, where it thereby boosts the infantry unit's damage. I haven't decided if we'll include that or not. But, you know, I'll show you how to do it anyway, actually. All that said, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, hit that like button down below. And make sure to subscribe and hit that notify icon so you know when the next tutorial is out. As always, I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.